Thank you. We'll call the uh, February 16, 2021 council, regular council meeting to order. First on the agenda is zoning amendment bylaw number 6 001 2021. Public hearing. This public hearing is being convened pursuant to section 890 subsection 1 of the Local Government Act in order to consider the proposed Village of Cash Creek Zoning Amendment Bylaw 6 001 2021. At this public hearing, the public will be allowed to make presentations to Council. All persons participating who believe that their interest in property is affected by the proposed bylaw shall be given a reasonable opportunity to be heard or to present written submissions respecting matters contained in the proposed bylaw. We will first hear from those persons that re requested it in writing to address council regarding this issue. We will then ask the general public participating online if there is any person who wishes to speak on the proposed bylaw. Any questions or concerns must be typed in on the Facebook Live site beginning with the first and last names of the person making the submission. You may then give us the benefit of your views concerning the proposed by law. <coughs> Members of council may, if they wish, ask questions of you following your presentation. However, the main function of council members this evening is to listen to the views of the public. It is not the function of council at this public hearing to debate the merits of the proposed bylaw with individual citizens. Everyone shall be given a reasonable opportunity to be heard at this meeting. No one will be or should feel discouraged or prevented from making their views heard. Any written questions, comments, or concerns about the proposed bylaw received receive prior to 12 noon, Tuesday, February 16, 2021, will be read out at the public hearing. Late submissions may be heard if Council passes a motion to do so. To maintain or order during the public hearing and to ensure everyone has a reasonable opportunity to be heard, the following rules of procedure have been established for public hearings. Only the Village of Cash Creek Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 6-001-2021 is being considered at this meeting. Each speaker will be permitted to address the hearing twice. Initial presentations will not be limited, providing your comments are relevant to the issues at hand and the hearing is not being obstructed. After each person who wishes to speak has done so, a secondary opportunity to speak will be allowed. However, each speaker will be limited to 10 minutes. If further hearings are required, we will reconvene additional hearings until each person has an opportunity to be heard. To begin your presentation, please state your first and last names for the record. Your name and comments will be recorded in the minutes of this meeting and any reports generated from this meeting. Please observe these rules if you have any questions with the matter in which this public hearing is conducted. Please direct your comments to the chair. The corporate officer will now read out any written submissions, comments or, cons or concerns submitted by the de deadline. If there are any online participants who wish to address the public hearing, the Hub Online will now read them out after the CAO has uh, written or uh, uh, spoken on the written submissions. Thank you. Okay, we received one submission before the deadline. Uh, there is some information in here that does not apply to the bylaw. Uh, the question is, can I run the dispensary? Uh, that is not a matter for this bylaw. I'm only bringing it up to uh, uh, clarify what we are doing here. This bylaw establishes the procedures under which we will issue a business license. Uh, the business license bylaw is a separate matter. Tonight we're just allowing it, we're uh, suggesting that it be added to our zoning bylaw. And uh, if there is a dispensary that is uh, 
applies to open in Cash Creek, they would be subject to the terms and conditions that are established by the province of British Columbia and the government of Canada. Uh, they would have to have provide a license to the village of Cash Creek prior to starting operation. And uh, in the case of can I run the dispensary, that would be between that would be up to the uh, operator if we uh, get that far in this process. Thank you. Now, do we have a motion from council to accept the uh, two late submissions, written submissions? So moved. Second. Discussion. Sorry, I'm going to All in favor to uh, encourage unanimously. Sorry, just uh, making a note there before I uh, moved on and lost track of things. Uh, this first uh, submission is from the Williams Lake First Nation. Um, basically, I'm not going to read it, the whole thing out because it's three pages long. Uh, what it comes down to is that they are asking that the 200 uh, meter buffer zone be reduced to 175 meters or whatever would allow them to establish a cannabis retail store at 1153 Trans Canada Highway, that would be uh, adjacent to uh, the uh, Junction's coffee shop. Thank you. The second late submission is from uh, Chuck Pittman. Um, please explain in layman's terms how and what are the specific effects of this proposed zoning bylaw amendment to my business, Channer Truck Repairs and Pittman Properties Limited? Uh, specific effects, there won't be any because uh, at this point in time, uh, Channer Truck Repairs and Pittman Properties are within the buffers, the 200 meter uh, buffer zone. Uh, therefore, uh, none of them, neither, none of the Channer or Pittman properties properties uh, would be able to open a cannabis business, nor would any of the immediately adjacent properties to those properties. Thank you. So we're going to have a four-minute uh, recess until so we have the online submissions.
two, one. Okay, thank you. No response from, uh, or no questions from uh, online. Apparently uh, not. No, there are no questions from anybody online. Thank you. Just one question, then now that the camera is on, is that uh, question was, uh, did we, uh, what's the protocol for the public hearing notification? Um, because one of the persons didn't receive their letter until Thursday or Friday, and the meeting was Tuesday. The uh, requirements for public notification require posting in two consecutive issues of the local newspaper. Uh, there are the uh, that ad came out uh, in this past Thursday's paper and the Thursday before. In addition to that, it was posted. Uh, the notice and bylaw were posted on our Facebook page and on our website. <coughs> and uh, I would have to double check the records, but to the best of my knowledge, those letters went out uh, a week ago Friday. So uh, uh, they should have, uh, everybody should have received them uh, at least a week and a half ago. Yeah. The, this, this one was not received until Thursday or Friday. I cannot speak to that because I don't know what may have happened once it left our office. Not everyone picks up their mail every day. He picks his mail up every day. But he doesn't read the newspaper. We, we have this issue at the regional board level constantly. And uh, we do our best to make notifications and, uh, and that's all we can do. Uh, one thing I can advise is that uh, at the beginning of last week, Monday, Tuesday, we started getting phone calls about that letter because rather than restrict it to just those properties within a certain distance of the affected property, we decided to send it to everyone in town. So most people did get it uh, with plenty of notice. Before closing this public hearing, I will call three times for any further speakers on any of the matters contained in the proposed bylaw. Those who have previously spoken twice during this public hearing may not speak again unless there is something new they wish to speak about. For the first time, is there anyone who wishes to make any further representations? For the second time, is there anyone who wishes to make any further representations? For the third and final time, is there anyone who wishes to make any further representations? There being no further speakers, I declare this public hearing closed. Thank you all. Okay, uh, in order to prepare for uh, the delegation, I'm going to need to uh, hook this up. Okay. And I'm afraid that tripod with the cameras is going to have to. Yeah, uh, we're going to move that in one second here. <laughs> and just let me. You know, there was a bunch of dust. I started to watch this at the actual office meeting. I was watching the truck and couldn't get it here. But um, I figured there wasn't a whole pile of point because I was going to get it again here. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about time management. <laughs> you were watching what in the the what national council meeting? Oh, I see. I was watching it live, but then I oh. after I bugged here, <laughs> told him I couldn't hear. <laughs> we're gonna move. I watched Clinton's speech, very interesting. That's been muted. I don't understand why. Technically? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I actually skipped this part because I knew I was going to I should have watched it, but I didn't have the head start. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
sure you give this to Martin. Oh, for the door? Yeah. Oh, no, that's the uh, HDMI cable. Can you plug in? Okay, good. Just wondering why it's not coming on Is your computer blocking the five? No. Oh, there you go. So the last time I talked to you, you were possibly going back to work this week? I meet with the nurse tomorrow. <clears throat> and the doctor maybe Friday. Go from there. Do you like your ready to go back? I might be graduated, so to slowly go back rather yeah. than going full time for 12 hours. It's well, so yeah, it's crazy in here when your system's so beat up. Yeah. I don't know what that looks like yet, though. Yeah. Um. Okay. Is there a late question? There's a late question, yeah. It, it's, it, you answered it already, oh. so I'm just going to answer it for you. Okay, me. thank you. So uh, <laughs> if we are not hearing what we're, uh, anyone's asking, uh, feel free to let us know. Okay. Just one second, Jamie. Hi. Are we ready to go? Good. Thanks. Welcome, Jamie. Thank you. This is Delegation Thompson and Nicola Regional District Invasive Plant Management Program. Jamie Vieira. And he's going to do a presentation to council regarding uh, that topic. So, Jamie, the floor is yours, or cyberspace is yours, whatever you would like. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I trust that everyone has the um, proposal that was. Oh, I just can't see through my virtual background. Let me turn that off. This proposal. Yes. That was included in your agenda packages. So um, I understand that you guys are just um, viewing me on a computer screen there. So I, I think I won't bother putting up the actual PowerPoint presentation. Um, basically, I have a presentation that follows this proposal along. Um, but uh, I'll just speak to it and then I'll be happy to just uh, take any questions. Just give me one moment. Okay, so um, <clears throat> thank you for having me. Uh, to start off, I guess I wanted to clarify right off the bat, because there actually has been a little bit of confusion from some other councils, uh, exactly what this proposal entails. So uh, you guys are my, I think, sixth council that we present this to. So the proposal that's in front of you was sent to every member municipality in the GNRD. 
And so what, what we're doing here is this is an, we're amending the uh, invasive plant service uh, sometime in the spring uh, once we finish all these presentations. So what that means is uh, the bylaw will be amended to add any municipalities that want to opt into this program. Uh, so what I'll talk about here in a minute is why I think this will improve invasive plant control region-wide, but it's really up to individual municipalities whether they want to opt into the service or not. So what it's not is a, it's not a one-time request for funding. There have been a few questions on that uh, sort of regard, sort of thinking that we're asking for just a one-time funding contribution. It's not that. If you want to be part of the service, you get included in, in the region-wide service, and then it becomes part of the, the total, um, uh, I guess, tax contribution that you make to the TNRD to come, come back on. So, um, why might the village be interested? What is the real concern here? Well, the concern is that um, regardless of whether it's a rural area, urban area, or semi-urban somewhere in between, weeds don't follow boundaries on a map. So, um, and when I'm saying weeds, we're talking about invasive plants, those plants that are known to um, cause uh, out-compete native plants. Um, so they're a problem in the ecosystem, but they're also a problem in um, just regular urban lots, which I'll talk about in a minute. And the reason we're bringing this up now uh, is the, so our, the TNRD Invasive Plant Program has been in place, this service is one of the first services that the TNRD established, it's been, been in place for 40 years. Um, and it was set up to serve rural areas, specifically the ranching and agriculture sector. So at the time when it was established, it was an electoral area service only, and all the municipalities were excluded from that. And this is the first time we've actually considered and given the option for municipalities to join the service. And the reason we're doing that is that more landowners, especially with the last five, even 10 years, are coming to us, to, to the TNRD, asking for help from our invasive plant program. And um, in many cases, which I'll, I'll speak to in a minute, we're having to decline being able to assist them because they're not within the service area, because they're within the municipality. We're also fielding more questions and, and offering more help to municipal staff. So we're happy to do that where we can, but we're finding more and more that our staff's time be, is being taken up, sort of assisting and guiding municipal staff who don't have expertise to manage invasive plants on their own property. So um, before I speak to our specific program, what it is, I just wanted to highlight um, just a couple examples of invasive plants that would be and could be a problem Creek. Um, so the two sort of horror stories I'll, I'll talk about is um, one plant called uh, Japanese knotweed. So knotweed, uh, you may have heard of it, it's um, a problem in the in, in, in particular in the South Coast and the Sea to Sky corridor. We do have, <coughs> excuse me, we do have infestations already in the TNRD and Merritt and Chase and Clearwater that we've identified. And not we, I'm mentioning not we because it's actually a bigger concern in, in urban, arguably a bigger concern in, in municipalities than it is in, in rural areas because it really causes infrastructure damage. So um, the example in, in the town of Clearwater, there's a hotel that their septic tank had to be with a small little, um, Ian, I guess you will, with a small um, little hotel. They had to remove their entire septic system because it completely failed and actually didn't realize why it failed until it was dug up and the entire septic system was destroyed by the root system of knotweed. So knotweed's known to like grow through foundations, grow through um, pipes, grow through concrete sidewalks. Um, there's, it, so it was first, it, it's, it's from, introduced from Asia, but it's become a problem in the United Kingdom before it got introduced, introduced to, to BC. And it's so bad in the United Kingdom now, there's often, um, banks will often not give mortgages for properties that have not weed infestations. So that's how serious this, this is getting. Um, another plant, so you could feel free to Google that later on if you time and see what it looks like. Yeah. Um, uh, giant hogweed is another one I'll bring up that's a uh, you know, particular concern in, in urban areas. And uh, this is uh, fortunately not in the TRD yet, but there's a lot of, um, of it in the, the lower main island in the Fraser Valley area. And it uh, can grow along um, creeks and kind of the riparian areas. And the, one of the big scary things about it is that it, the sap 
tap on it is actually toxic um, to your skin. So if you touch it, you actually get uh, equivalent to third degree burns. It basically causes a, uh, a severe um, reaction in your skin. So um, there's now like even WorkSafe BC has uh, a bulletin about you know the risks and hazards around working around uh, giant hawkweed things like that. So those are just two examples, sort of to I guess for lack of a better word, scare you in that um, this isn't just a uh, you know invasive plants aren't just a problem if you're a, a garden. It's it's a problem to the across the board. But um, bring it back to the proposal um, just to explain what our program is, how it works, uh, what it does, and, and basically what it does do. So there's three main components of the TNRD Invasive Plant Program. The main one and the, and the biggest budget item is our Landowner Assistance Program. And that's what um, we often get inquiries from residents with the municipalities wanting to take advantage of this program, and unfortunately we have to do turn it down. So the way it works is if you have uh, invasive plant on your property, you can hire a certified contractor to control that plant and submit a one-page application, and we issue a rebate of 50% uh, of the cost of that treatment up to actually 100% if it's a specific new invader plant. So actually the two examples that I just talked to you about, hogweed and, and knotweed, if it was those species, we would actually rebate the full cost of control of that um, plant. Um, and that can be applied for on an annual basis, so which is actually a regular. Um, we, we find that quite often that there's, there's regular um, residents who apply for this year after year because they're actively controlling it. Um, so it may be on one side of the property and then they control it there and pops up on the other side of the property. But the overall goal is to reduce the spread, keep it from moving onto the neighbor's property. So it's not a failure if the same property owners are applying for a rebate year after year because we know that's preventing it from spreading further onto the next property, next property onto the highway, into Crown Land, etc. Um, so the main component is the financial assistance. Uh, the second part of the program is um, our regional coordination. So the TNRD has a, um, a board appointed committee uh, that's that has a, a TNRD board members on it, as well as um, other stakeholder groups, representatives from the province, from First Nations, from industry. And the point of that committee is to really coordinate our approach, whether it's private land or whether it's crown land, coordinate how we're treating uh, invasive plants. So I had, um, <coughs> excuse me, I, I mentioned our, our landowner system program, preventing it from spreading onto a neighboring property. Well, when we're sitting around the table part of the committee meeting, um, we're, we're knowing where those infestations are, deciding which plants are the priorities, where to spend our money, because like everything, it's, you know, um, there could always be more money, there's always more work to do, so we need to be smart with, with where we're spending it. So that's sort of a regional coordination role. And then we have a staff person, so Colleen Hogan, she's our base supply management coordinator, so she's a full-time staff person devoted to um, coordinating all this work that I'm talking about. Uh, the third part of the program is the um, is our education function. So, you know, I mentioned a couple of these plants. Maybe you've heard of them. Maybe you haven't. Um, if you haven't heard of it, maybe they're growing in your yard. You realize, oh, that sounds like the problem that I've been having in my sidewalk for the last five years. Um, so that that's that's the reason for the education program. We don't you don't know it's a problem. Um, if you don't know what the plant is, then you don't know it's a problem, and then there's a risk of it spreading further. So we have a um, uh, uh, contractors who work with us on our education programs, as well as Colleen herself, you know, attending home shows. We attend your CD Saturday or CD Sundays events often. Um, uh, farmers markets, and obviously with COVID, it's been a really different story the last 18 months or so. So we've been trying to be creative and doing from virtual sessions, but um, getting out there to to educate people on on the risk and also what programs are available to help them. So those are the three components. So how, what's the, and I'll get to sort of the, the crux of this whole proposal. What are we proposing? Um, so first I'll mention the, the current financial model. So our current budget is about $350,000 per year. Um, sorry, let me, let me rephrase that. $350,000 per year is collected through taxation of the 10 electoral areas and about $50,000 per year we receive in grant funding from the province. Now the grant funding is specifically tied to the coordination and the education function of our program. 
the financial assistance portion is 100% funded through electoral area trade district taxation. So again, that's why um, only property owners within the service area can receive that benefit. So what we've done in terms of the financial model that's proposed here is um, something a bit unique. Typically, most of the region-wide services, the cost sharing between municipalities and electoral areas is based on converted assessment. When that happens, the municipalities, obviously there's more assessed um, value within the municipalities, end up paying the lion's share of the program. And we realize that wouldn't be fair in this, in this, in this program. Um, so we kind of thought outside the box and ran through a number, number of models. And what we ended up with is this fairly simple um, arrangement that we're proposing here is we just group the municipalities based on population. So you'll see that uh, Cash Creek falls in that grouping of the, the under 1,000 people. And then uh, uh, assigned a maximum percentage of the total invasive plant budget that they would, that would be the maximum amount that they would contribute to the program. So we can make sure that percentage is still very small because we know the lion's share of the, the financial assistance programs, for example, still will go to those rural properties, the larger ranches, et cetera. But um, we, so what we did is that we basically came up with an estimate of how much we think the total budget will go up when we add municipalities on. So as a starting point, um, Cash Creek, um, we're proposing that in the first year it be a $5,000 contribution. Um, but the important number is that 1.5%. So if we find that, you know, for example, there's, there's new infestations happening throughout the district and we have to increase the budget for rebates, then we increase the total budget overall, but the amount contributed by the village won't exceed that 1.5%. Um, what else do I have to tell you? Oh, and I'll mention uh, one more thing. Um, you may be familiar, um, if Martin's briefed to you on this or not, um, the, um, there is, uh, we received $1 million in funding from the Red Cross through Wildfire um, Assistance Program, and that's been devoted to invasive plant work in the whole Western TNRD. So uh, I know there's work planned within the village um, this year, and I think some of them last year through that program. So just, I want you to keep in mind that that program is, uh, I guess, to be blunt, for lack of a better word, free money that's not from this program, it's not from our TNRD taxation, it's separate funding through the Red Cross for this wildfire assistance. Uh, this is the last year of that program, so all of that money needs to be spent by the end of this year, and uh, there's, there's no carryover. The Red Cross contract is very clear on that. So timing wise this works out well, but um, still for... Uh, oh boy, I think we're getting bad with the problems here. Okay, sure. lower internet. And... Oh, sorry. Uh, you were kind of breaking up there. Everything was slowing right down. Is that a question? No, we were just having okay. some connectivity issues. Separate universe. Okay. Am I back? Yep. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I, I'm not sure where I cut off, but I was just mentioning that the, the Red Cross program is ending this year, and if, this, if you guys opt into this program, it would start in 2022, so it would be a, a smooth transition. Yeah. So just to uh, wrap up, the benefits to the village if you opt into this program is having a stable, long-term, from a piece of plant program within your boundaries. We also increase support for me and staff that are invasive, managing invasive plants on public land, like within your own um, municipal land and parks, and the enhanced coordination region wide. We have increased education outreach programs within your municipality, and we're protecting all land values from the impacts of invasive plants. So just the procedural next steps. If interested, uh, we would require a council resolution showing your intent to opt into the service, and I could provide Martin with a, a sample resolution on that. 
um, then it'll go to the TNR board to actually amend the bylaw to include those municipalities that say they want in. And then there'll be a final council for resolution on the new bylaw is created and the expanded service and taxation would begin in 2022. And I will stop there and take questions. Any questions for Mr. Vieira? Councillor Coomer. Hi, Jamie. I was wondering if you have a list somewhere of the eligible invasive weeds as opposed to just the plain old nuisance weeds, nuisance weeds that we all have. Yeah, so um, it, generally we follow the provincial noxious weed list. So it's actually a legislated list. I could, I could send that list. It's quite an extensive list. There's probably a 150 or 200 species on there. But then we also, as needed, will add our own uh, plants that are new and up and coming. We don't want to, if there's a, a new species that's introduced, we don't want to wait for the province to actually change the legislation before we can start you know, funding the treatment of it. So we have a number of species that we just added ourselves to our list. Um, and and that, that's determined by the Invasive Plant Committee. Thank you. So the short answer is yes, I have a list. It's a long, long list that I can send, send, uh, I can send Martin a link to that. That would be appreciated. Do you have a question? Uh, yeah, uh, actually just a couple of, uh, one question and one uh, just query, I guess. Uh, you said uh, you, the budget is 350000 a year from the electoral areas. And you also got a certain uh, grant. What was the amount of the grant and where does it come from? Yeah, so um, typically most years it's year to year, but uh, the, the uh, Forest Lands and Natural Resources gives us a $40,000 grant for coordination and education. And uh, Ministry of Transportation historically gives the $10,000 grant for coordination and education. And then it's about 350000 a year that we collect through taxation from the electoral area. But now that grant money does have strings attached, we cannot use that grant money for the financial assistance program. We can't pay that out to landowners. We use that exclusively for the um, education outreach component. Okay, the other one was regarding the, uh, the free money, for lack of a better word. Uh, could we, for instance, hire someone ourselves uh, under that? program just for uh, invasive plant uh, control or would that have to be coordinated by the TNRD? How does that work? So um, that's a good question and so uh, so Mike Deagles he's the coordinator of that program and um, I'll actually if he hasn't reached out to you Martin yet. He has. Um, uh, okay so he has. So the, so the way that works is and we've actually partnered with the Village of Clinton last year and we have the same offer out to both you guys the Village of Cash Creek and the Village of Ashcroft. And what we did with that, that funding is we partnered with the village and said, if you hire a person like a summer student or, or a laborer for the summer, um, we can fund that through this Red Cross program. Because like I said, we have a, a, a big grant that we received from Red Cross and we need to spend it this year. And so however we can use it to kill, control, prevent the spread of invasive plants um, within the wild uh, elephant Hill wildfire um, area, uh, we do that. So yes, there's funding available for the village uh, to do that, and we encourage you to do that. It worked well in Clinton last year. They basically had a full-time person who was working through the parks, through their roadways, essentially doing door-to-door -door education on invasive plants, as well at the same time pulling invasive plants that are in the community. Even Any further for Jamie? Councillor Pittman. So I see with the $5,000 starting contribution, that will be each every year after that, that we're part of this program? Yes, so it, it would be similar to all the other TNRD services that you pay into. So for example, the, the regional library system um, and the solid waste program, uh, it would basically be lumped in with all the TNRD services that you pay for as a, as a lump sum trip to the taxation, so that 5000 would be added into that. Uh -huh. Thank you. Further? 
I have two questions real quick, Jamie. They don't uh, they don't pertain to the vasive plant uh, uh, discussion we're having this evening, but I hope I don't put you on the spot. Just for the benefit of our council, how's uh, the progress on the Eco Depot? Sure. Um, so progress in the Eco Depot is finally moving along. Uh, I'll give you a quick background. Um, what held us up last summer was, was um, archaeological work that was required, which wasn't that big of a surprise. Um, but what happened was due to COVID, essentially, it delayed the whole archaeological review process, that there was no permits being issued from the art branch. So it postponed us uh, quite a bit. So right now we're finally um, finishing the um, First Nation component of the ARC review and we'll be able to do the field work uh, coming up in early March. Hope, we're hoping within weeks and then we'll be able to issue the tender in the spring. So um, fingers crossed we'll still be issuing a contract for construction to happen this summer. Um, we expect the construction to be three to four months. So. Um, I'm going to say it, but please don't hold me to it. <laughs> We're doing everything we can to have it done and open by the end of this year. Thank you. You can hold me to it once we issue a contract. I just We're not quite that far down the road yet, but I can guarantee anything. Thank you. And the second question, and I don't know if you have the answer, and I, don't, I hope I'm not putting you on the spot, but uh, the Voyant Alert Notification Program, are you familiar with that at all? Is there any other member municipalities that have subscribed with the TNRD? Uh, yeah, I, I'm familiar with it only somewhat, so I'm okay. not the best person to speak to it. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm just for... That's fine, thank you. You don't know everything? We thought you did. He seems to be involved yeah. everything. Uh, thanks, Jamie. Uh, I appreciate your time and, and, and the discussion we had this evening. Thanks, James. Can we have a just short recess? Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ready to go? Yeah. Thank you. Let me, the committee of the whole meeting of February 1st, 2021 be adopted as presented. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Carried unanimously. The notice of the regular council meeting held on February 1st, 2021 be adopted as presented. That's so moved. Second. Discussion? In favor? Very good, Adam. So, 
Uh, thank you, Liberty, Mr. Vieira, regarding his presentation. Second. All in favor? <laughs> Carried unanimously. Can we put that discussion on uh, our next agenda, please? Good. Well, after we get the list. The council received and filed the Chief Administrative Officer status report. So moved. Okay. Discussion. Uh, Councilor Pittman. Uh, page 20 for July 20th, 2020. The um, Ashcroft Cash Creek Asset Management Collaboration. Have we heard anything back for the uh, pending grant approval? No, we have not. Nothing yet? Uh, the other one is the 20, page 21, the Clean Renewable Energy Infrastructure Grant. Uh, is, there, is there an update for that one? No, there is not. I, if there were any updates, uh, I'd be bringing it up myself right now. If uh, so, what's on the agenda, or pardon me, what's on my report is current. Councilor Peters? Um, just on page 20, the Bonaparte Indian Band meeting. Given that we're heading into Frechette and we have had um, help from them and reciprocal help to them, can we set something up via Zoom um, in the next little while perhaps to have a discussion on this agreement and just make sure that we have everything in place for Frechette? Page 27. Yeah, well, I've got the item. I'm just looking for uh, where I should be writing the note down to uh, <laughs> set that up. Uh, uh, if Council would be so kind, I'd like a resolution to that effect. I would move that we set up a virtual meeting with the Bonaparte Indian Band to discuss um, mutual aid and protocol agreements between the, the village and the band, uh, especially given that we have worked cooperatively over the last for Shep, and Second. we'll probably be moving forward doing that as well. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Carried unanimously. Go ahead. Um, the Clean Renewable Energy Infrastructure Grant, um, I'm thinking that that should be moved into more of our long-term, ongoing and long-term, just given all of the financial <coughs> challenges that we have right now that I don't know whether we need to take that particular project on at this time. I think there are other more important projects. I don't know what the feeling is. Uh, uh, not that this is uh, something we should ignore by uh, Yeah, I don't want it to go away. Uh, but I, I tend to agree with you. We have uh, much more urgent matters to deal with first. Uh, this was uh, CFO Martini's uh, uh, initiative. Uh, I will run that by her with council's approval and uh, make sure she's, she's okay she's with uh, postponing this for uh, uh, a few years. Okay, I'll bring it up next okay. Anything further? Committee reports, economic development, Councilor Peters and Councilor Kruger. We have to. Oh. Uh, there's a motion on the floor to adopt the report. The CAO's report. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Economic development. I have no report. I have no report. Budget and administrative services, Councilor Peters and Councilor Cooper. Um. I would move that staff be authorized to enter into an agreement with Voyant Alert, the emergency notification system for option number one. Second. Discussion. From an emergency point of view, I see benefit in it, in that I've had numerous people over a period of time some don't have email, some don't have, some don't use computers, 
Uh, there is the option for a phone call as well, so it would be the administration of that that would be a, a question. But I think it would give more options, especially when things are um, critical, like we've had in the last couple of years at, on, on a number of occasions. And I also see the benefit to staff moving forward on, you know, when garbage trucks break and I, the notes that were in the thing, I see great benefit in, in that regard too for the village to use on an ongoing basis, not just for emergencies. Uh, uh, CFO Martini and I, and I can't remember whether anyone else was listening in or not, but we did get a presentation from the uh, company that uh, provides Voyant Alert. They were saying that uh, when people sign up for the service, they can check off what services they they wish to get mm -hmm. notifications on. So they're not going to get a, a notice for everything out there if all they want is our emergency notices. One thing I'd like administration before we uh, put this to a vote, if it's possible, is to check with the regional district because um, I was under the impression, because I signed up for it already through the regional district, that we uh, check with um, uh, anyone at the regional district to be able to answer that question other than Jamie this evening because he's not involved in it, but to see if we're part of that program that the regional district has already paid into and that uh, we uh, pursue that avenue instead of committing to the uh, $1,200. Okay, if I may. Uh, right now, uh, yes, people could get notices if they sign up uh, mm -hmm. uh, on a TNRD site, mm -hmm. but we cannot post notices to that site. If we want to be able to post things like uh, garbage route changes or uh, public hearings or that kind of thing, then we need to have our own. It can't be done through the TNRD. Not for our notices. The TNRD only posts their own notices. So are we are we concerned about emergencies or are we concerned about late garbage pickup? Both. If we have it, we might as well use it. But primarily for emergencies. So if it's for emergencies, if we did a uh, in conjunction with the regional district, we would save twelve hundred dollars per year. Uh, yes. Uh, however, we would have to send them the information to uh, post and uh, the only people that would get it would be people who were signed up for that service with the TNRD. Yes. Uh, so I, so that, that's the question. That, so uh, the original motion was to, to be part of that program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at a cost of uh, option one, which is uh, $1,800 a year. However, there is a discount if we go through the, with the uh, TNRD for a total of uh, $1,440 per year. Uh, the $1,200 per year that you were mentioning is for option two, which is pay as you go. Councilor mm -hmm. Pittman. I'm wondering if, if it's an option to go to two next year like rather because it's going to be 1440 per year um, I'm wondering if we're better off going with the twelve hundred dollars per year and seeing where we uh, land for the extra costs uh, I I can look into that and bring it back to council if council so wishes. I'm not sure whether there would be a significant difference or not if it's pay as you go. Um, it would save us, what does that add up to there? Uh, 200, about $240 a year, no. No, but it's 940, about uh, 480, almost $500 a year. Mm -hmm. so we should uh, deal with councilor Peter's motion. First. Uh, I just have one other question, um, and then I'll, I'll make a friendly amendment. Um, if we were to piggyback onto the TNRD, we would have to do a, a um, 
public education kind of thing exactly. on that. Um, but what there is, what is the cost involved on us requesting alerts to be sent out? Is there an additional There's cost? There's no additional cost. And usually when we have an emergency, that's why I asked, my, my question was whether it's for notifying people of garbage pickup, which we can do on our Facebook page, versus a subscribing to a service that we technically are already paying into. Uh, uh, because most of, 99, well I would say 100% of the time, we're the, t the TNR, TNRDs involved with us in an emergency situation anyway. Mm -hmm. So the transfer of information from us to the regional district would happen very, very quickly. It's just an ed educational uh, process that we would have to go through. And uh, I'm just looking at the, the, it's not a lot of money, but it's money. But if we go through the TRRD, am I going to get alerts for merit? You get alerts for your area. It's whatever you sign up for once you click on the site and ask. Your exchange will dictate what, which alert you're going to get. But is it flooding, in which case you get flooding all over the place, or is it flooding in Cash Creek? We should look into that further, if that's a friendly amendment that you would like, Councillor Peters. Do we need to defeat the motion or and put a new one on? That wasn't Councillor Peters' motion. No, I'm just asking a question. <laughs> I know. But the friendly amendment. Who's, whose motion was it? I'm sorry. Councillor Coomer. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry if I bypassed oh, you there. So Councillor Coomer. No. hate to do that. Do we have to just defeat the motion and then bring it back? Or Are or we could... Can, uh, can we table it? Uh, can we defer it until... With lay it on the table? Yeah, to the, let's lay it on the table. And if there's a specific time the council wants the information to come back to them, uh, that could be a part of the uh, motion as well. Before you go to Maybe Bridget's coming. It'd be mm -hmm. nice to have some sort of preparedness. It would, it would also be, it would be nice to be able to have some kind of a, an alert system for everyone. So a motion to um, postpone this till the next council meeting with the updated information? I'll second that motion. Discussion? Favor? Unanimous. Thank you. <coughs> oh, <stop it. laughs> if you can't laugh. I'm allowed to be out. <laughs> um, cost of pool replacement. I move that senior staff be directed to develop a report for the March 15th council meeting outlining options to determine a cost to replace the existing swimming pool facility with a new facility having the same features. Okay. Discussion. Councillor Coomer. Um, actually, I, I asked that this be put on here tonight because I was, I've been thinking about the pool a lot, as you probably have as well, and the conclusion I came to is we cannot fix the current pool. We need to either replace it or wave goodbye. And I think it's been a long time since the village has actually built anything of that sort of value. It would be nice to leave something for our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren, perhaps uh, a beautiful uh, new outdoor pool that they can enjoy for a long time. Recreation infrastructure is, I believe, important to our community's well-being. It ticks off those boxes that people use while determining whether they want to move to a community or stay in a community, and we have housing developments happening right now. Um, something like that, uh, you know, is a factor in people deciding whether they're going to stay here or go to Clinton or go to Ashcroft or go to Kamloops. Um, I believe it's a vital piece of the town's I infrastructure. It provides exercise for young and old swimming lessons uh, around here where people like to swim in rivers. I think learning how to swim is, is very important. We have uh, several deaths by drowning in our rivers in BC every year. 
Um, so can't emphasize that point enough. Recreation, economic development uh, could be a, a real drive in that area if we promote it and uh, attracts, uh, again, att attracts potential residents. Um, I see a lot of pluses to it. Of course, it costs money, but our roads cost money too, and we would not uh, consider tearing them up because we don't make any money off of them. Councillor Pittman. I agree with Wendy. However, um, I think that the, the public has been waiting for us to provide them the re uh, report on what the actual cost to repair the current pool and the list of issues and concerns with the current pool. So I don't want to um, continue to postpone the opening of this pool. So I would like to uh, see us um, with a concrete report, financial report, and list of the actual issues with this pool. I think for <laughs> for you know public peace of mind, that's not a bad idea. Um, and I would also like to see as part of uh, this report. I don't know whether March 15th is enough time, but um, for a new pool for costs. But I'd also like to see added to that the ongoing maintenance cost, uh, estimated ongoing maintenance costs, because it's not like putting a pool in your house where you just clean it and change the chlorine once in a while. There's a lot more to the upkeep of a pool. So I'd like to see that included in that report as well. May I, Mr. Mayor? Go ahead. I'd like to point out too that uh, a modern facility will be much more um, efficient in electricity and power, uh, other utilities like that. Um, and also, uh, if we uh, if we do go ahead on this, um, I think the uh, community would be a very important part uh, in the fundraising aspect. Um, while the village has certain grants that are available to it, the uh, the public uh, would also uh, be able to take part in. Uh, in doing some extra fundraising for that. Any further? Go ahead. Um, just wanted to clarify for Councillor Peters, the report that's being asked for here is not to determine cost. It would just be to determine options for finding out what the cost would be. Mm -hmm. uh, there are several different ways that we could do that. Uh, that I would outline in a report and uh, hopefully come out with uh, at least rough estimates for costs for those uh, for Council's consideration. I agree with all your points that we've heard from everyone this, this evening. It is an important part of our recreational program. Our new pool is going to be very, very expensive. We don't even have our annual provisional budget complete yet. We don't know where 2022 and 2023 even sits yet. So to ask administration to spend time to put together anything at this point is way premature. A, not until we get our provisional budget done, 2021, and at least where we know where we sit in 22 and two, 2022 and 2023. Further, we have to consult with the public to see what they want to see with recreation. They might not want a new public pool, outdoor pool. They may want an indoor pool. We don't know that. We have to go into a public consultation process with recreation in general for them to give us their feedback to us. They're the ones that are going to be paying the bill. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, our current pool in its haste to be built in 1973, they put it in a floodplain. Over the last 46 years, because of where they built the pool, it cost every citizen in this community a million dollars over 46 years. P 
because of the expense that it was built on the floodplain. We are going to move cautiously and we're going to hear from the public before we move forward. I, I guess... Go ahead, Councillor Pippa. I guess it's just that the, um, the public is, uh, was promised uh, a meeting back in October, October 2019 and, and February 2021. So I guess they just need to... Um, have some sort of feedback, some kind of notification that, you know, where we're at, right? No, you understand that. So. And the, 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 the dilemma we're facing is that we don't know where we sit with our budget. Mm -hmm. And we don't know where we're going to be sitting in 2022 and 2023. We've run deficits since 2028, well, 17, I believe. 2017. And that's has to be factored into the how we think we're going to move forward. And I want to make one point clear. That million dollars wasn't a loss of operations when it was open. That million dollars was a loss when it was closed from, Mar uh, from September to the beginning of April of every year. And that's a very conservative estimate. No, you just said what I was going to. Thank you. I agree that we, that we need to know and we need to have our budget in line and have a good number and factor of where we sit in. Um, but there is value for us and for the public to know that we do still care about that pool and it is still high in front in our minds. I think there is value to finding out, but is it the right time? I don't think March 15th is a, de a good enough deadline anyway. We have a lot going on with audits and budgets. We don't even know what the public wants. Mm -hmm. That's true. If we want another pool in that exact location, it can't go there. Right, it's in groundwater. That it costs us money yeah. to keep it operating 365 days a year, heated, treated, and maintenance. I mean, I'd like to go back and look at what transpired in 1973 for them to build it there, with that knowledge behind it. We didn't flood I just no. Yeah. It's it's groundwater that we're yeah. dealing with. It's not flooding. flooding. <coughs> uh, I have a certain understanding as to I think what. Uh, this cost is a result of, but please confirm for me. But the way it sits right now, because it is in a in a floodplain in a high uh, in a high water water, water table part of town, we have to leave water in the swimming pool year round. Otherwise, it would lift up out of the ground. Mm -hmm. We have to heat that water. We have to provide at least some level of chlorination, not as much as we would if it were open. That water has to be heated and it has to be circulating. And I if uh, is that the reason for this for this cost that we're referring to? That's my understanding. But was there anything? It's else? operating cost between, and I'll try and be as clear as possible, from September to April. Okay. That's the the season that pool would normally be empty. If it was anywhere else in the province, it would be empty without any cost incurred. We have to heat it, treat it, maintain it, wear and tear on boilers and every functioning part of that pool. And a conservative estimate is one million dollars to date. That isn't of any benefit to the taxpayers. That is what it costs us when it's not in operation. Thank you. Any further? The uh, motion is uh, still on the floor. All in favor? Opposed? May I make another motion? Go ahead. Um, how much will it take to put together a report for the public? It depends on what council wants in the report. It de um, the report that Annette mentioned just on... On what it would cost to bring that pool up to a, an optimal operating standard? The reason I'm asking is that uh, perhaps uh, at the same time we present the report, we can also start a public engagement for a new pool. 
all I can advise because is it's going to take look, it's going to take a year. We or just more went through anyway. this counselor cover that we don't know what the public wants. Mm -hmm. If it's one thing, if we want to get to the point of opening up the existing pool, let's have a let's have a a, a report on what that's going to cost. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. the public is But asking. as far as moving beyond that stage, we're nowhere near that yet. Mm -hmm. A public engagement uh, process could take a year. Yes. Uh, finding money another year. So we're not looking at a new pool for two, three years. It, it won't mi probably, it won't even be in our, uh, our term of office. Well, uh, okay, I understand. If, if I may, to, to determine the costs, uh, well, well, first of all, what needs to be done and the cost is going to cost us money. We're going to have to hire someone with expertise in that area mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. uh, give us a full recommendation uh, as to what needs to be done, what it's going to cost, and what the operational, operational uh, impacts are going to be down the road. I, I don't want to be a naysayer. I'm the way most people are, I would love to see that swimming pool open or a swimming pool open. However, before we do that, I think we need to find out uh, from our budget discussions how much money we have uh, to put toward a study like that. Okay. Uh, I, I can guesstimate based on other uh, studies, similar kinds of studies and reports, uh, it's going to probably be in the neighborhood of twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars, just to determine what needs to be done and the cost. So we can discuss that further at the budget meeting. At council's pleasure, if that's what uh, you would like. It's just that we promised the, the public that we were going to do something, and it's feeling the pressure is 2019, it's 2021, and we need to... All, I can, all I can say in response to that is that uh, we had the best of intentions. Uh, COVID-19 threw a major wrench into uh, all of our long-term planning, as did three months of flooding last year, but we normally at most have a month. Uh, so, unfortunately, that means a lot of things that we wanted to uh, deliver for the public, we just could not do. Yeah, the, the other question, the $460,000 that we received, could we use part of, like, 25000 from that to do that study? Because that's I, kind of a, like a reopening after COVID? I would have to look at the grant criteria. I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. Maybe we could kind of look into that? Uh, it can definitely be something that we discuss at budget, budget okay. discussions. Thank you. Anything further? Policy and bylaw review, myself and Councillor Peters. And Councillor Peters. And I move to receive and file the report from Animal Control Officer Van Tyne. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? carried unanimously. Um, I have no report for the Entry Community Bylaw Enforcement Working Group because we had to postpone due to scheduling conflicts. We postponed our meeting until next Tuesday. So I'll have a report for the following meeting and perhaps a draft bylaw. Thank you. Public Works and Community Facilities, myself and Councillor DeVoe, no, no report. Village Services and Liaison, Councillor DeVoe and Councillor Coomer. I have no Health Committee report. We had a Zoom glitch today, so no meeting. Thank you. For me. Housing Needs Report. I'll move the recommendation that Council adopt the Housing Needs Report as presented at the February 1st, 2021 Committee of the Whole meeting. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Carried unanimously. Uh, under governmental relations, myself and Councillor Coomber, Growth Strategy Monitoring Report that uh, Council received and filed. So moved. Second. Discussion? 
All in favor? Carried unanimously. Landfill Advisory Committee, myself and Councilor Finger. Nothing new from me. Emergency Management Select Committee, Councilor Cooper and Councilor Peters. Uh, we were um, luckier uh, to have a meeting with our MLA, Jackie Taggart, by Zoom um, concerning our emergency planning for the upcoming Frechette. Um, Basically, we, um, Councillor uh, Coomber and I attended by Zoom as well as Mayor Tellerico and CAO Dawson. Um, I guess the, the gist of the conversation is that this is, bigger, this is bigger than our municipality and it's even bigger than the pr province that we need to stop working as independent um, silos is the catchphrase of the day. But uh, with the provincial government, the federal government, and the municipal governments and start working more globally, working together um, because the flooding involves all levels of government. Uh, we're, we're, our hands are tied on a lot of things because of um, Flynn Road or Fisheries and Oceans regulations in our creeks and the times that we can get in there and um, Crown Land where the flooding originates from and the municipalities for Cash Creek were kind of the end of that road. So we can do flood mitigation within the village but unless something is done higher up in the in the hills or changes are made kind of more globally or uh, mitigation is done more globally that it's it's a, a losing battle. And then we said we just want money but <laughs> so, you know, things like the culvert issues that we're having, if we fix one issue, we're, there's still two more culverts that will become issues. One of them that is um, controlled by Modi. Uh, climate change is a huge part of what's happening and, and uh, we, have to, we have to figure out some projects to try to mitigate the effects of that as well. Did you guys have anything to add? Nothing further. Well done. Thank you. Anything further? Thank you for that report. Received the report. We have a motion. We'll move that. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Carried unanimously. Creation of Standing Committee. Go ahead. Um, when this uh, select committee was uh, em initially set up, it was for a very specific purpose. That's why it was set up as a select committee, uh, to establish a, a local working group. Uh, that was done prior to COVID, so there's not really, uh, there wasn't really an opportunity to set up a, a working group. Um, since that time, however, this uh, emergency management committee has moved uh, beyond that initial purpose, and now uh, they're involved. They're, they're working toward things that involve uh, emergency management, uh, mitigation, response, uh, and recovery, which is outside the reason for the setting up the select committee. We do have a protective services committee uh, that used to look after that kind of thing, but really. That, one, that committee was set up for first responders, fire, police, ambulance. Emergency response is, far, or emergency management, I should say, is far different than first responders. Uh, we may have to respond very quickly, but in my own view, this should be turned from a select committee to a standing committee. In other words, it would be an ongoing committee, not just set up for one purpose. Do we have any councillors wishing to be part of that committee? If, uh, if it's your I would be willing to. I would be willing. So four? All four? Oh, okay. Councillors? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, it would be up to the mayor to establish that committee and appoint members to it. So thank you. Uh, you can either do it tonight or uh, at a later point. Thank you. Information correspondence. 
I will make a motion that we receive and file the letter from Ashcroft Up Society. Sorry, which one were you going with? Receiving files that you want. Oh. Do we have a second? We don't have a second. I move the floor. I would move that we approve a letter of support for the Ashcroft Hub Society in there. Second. <laughs> Discussion. Councilor Coomer. Uh, we declined that for Hat Creek Ranch. We decided not to give them a letter of support, so I don't know why this is different. Any further? All in favor? Thank you. Opposed? You want it recorded? It's not about yours, isn't it? It's your call. Yes. New business. Questions from the public? Questions from the press? We have. Sorry if you're out of time, Gareth. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we just ran out. Wow. Uh, we're we're, we're, we're going to get cut off. Oh, our, our systems can go for four hours. Thank you for that. <laughs> Th thank you, Gary. Um, so we do have several questions, mm -hmm. most of them pertaining to the pool. Uh, um, so you may have already answered a lot of these, but I still want to ask them mm -hmm. for propriety. Um, okay, so from Carmen Granta, for council meeting February 16th, has council, not administration, made any decisions regarding the cash rate pool? Also, will the pool learn which councillors supported opening the pool for the coming year? If the decision is pending, will there be opportunity for public consultation on the opening of the pool before a council decision is made? Is there any hope that the pool will open in 2021? I, I think we answer all those questions during our um, deliberation. One that is brought up several times is just will the pool open this year? We, we can't answer that question right at the moment. Which grants has the council looked at to fund the pool? Ashcroft got money to rebuild its hot tub through grants. Is Cash Creek Council applying for grants? And if so, I would like to know which ones were applied for and when. This is uh, continuing from these questions. No grants and has been applied for for cons uh, upgrades or remedial action to the pool, and we won't know we won't know what those will be until we have a study done on the pool and see where we're at with the study, and that recommendation will be followed through with the with a grant application if council wishes, and once we determine where we're at with our 2021, 2022, and 2023 budget. Uh, from Cheryl Lynn Millward. Uh, so, what? Why was it money budgeted yearly for the pool? If money was budgeted, what has happened to it? Um, so that's one. Well, if you want to answer these all together, or <laughs> <laughs> money budgeted to the pool? There was no money budgeted for the pool for last season, other than operational. Okay. Uh, why did the council not allot money yearly for the pool? That's a really good question. Uh, if they go and look at our financial statement, they'll understand what uh, our financial situation is in the municipality. And they've heard me say, the public out there has heard me say numerous times this evening, we're not going to make a decision on that pool till 2021, 2022, and 2023 budgets are looked at closely. Okay. We've been operating at a deficit since 2017, maybe further, uh, earlier than that and we're not going to go there we're not going to continue to run this municipality under deficit period uh why was the pool free when lifeguards are very expensive and what happened to grants for the pool will the village that the village received no we never received grants that i'm aware of and number two i don't know what how i i don't know what past council did with their free use of the pool. Uh, they made a motion or uh, uh, a recommendation to have the pool free and they had their good reasons to do so and th that was their reasons. Okay. Uh, from Barbara Roden, question from the journal. There are two questions from Barbara. 
Number one says, in May of 2019 uh, budget meeting, September 2019 newspaper article, and May 2020 budget meeting, council and our staff promised a public meeting for residents to have their say about the pool. When will such a meeting take place to ascertain what residents actually want regarding the Cash Creek pool and its future? Well, you see, old to answer that question, we, we were right in the midst of uh, numerous things that we had to deal with and we're recouping from that at the present time and again yes we are looking at our 2021 2022 and 2023 and um, uh, ms roden should understand how budgets work we have to be very careful how we move forward uh, last question from barbara is at the budget meeting in may 2020 cfo martini said there was forty thousand dollars in the budget for pool maintenance even though the pool was not open has the pool continued to be maintained to the best of the village's ability? Yes. Can, can you re question. repeat that question for yeah. me, please? Uh, at the budget meeting in May 2020, CFO Martini said there was $40,000 in the budget for pool maintenance, even though the pool was not opened. Has the pool continued to be maintained to the best of the village's ability? Of course it has. And that $40,000 reflects what I had specifically said earlier, from September, well, throughout the whole year, because the pool was closed, but you've got to re remember, our pool is operational 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. It needs maintenance, hydro, heat, chemistry, all that fall into, and repairs. It all falls into 365 days a year. Um, I do not believe that I have any other questions at this time. So that is, uh, I'm just going to check one more thing here. That is all that I have for questions for this evening. Thank you. Oh, hang on. Sorry. <laughs> Wait, what do we got? Uh, uh, Bar so, so Barbara, question three from the journal. The journal understands how budgets work. The question was about a meeting that has been promised for nearly two years. Well, the question was, does Barbara understand how, uh, how budgets work, not the journal. But uh, so the, the meeting, again, we, we're doing our best to put something together for the public. We have to finalize our budget before we can even go down the road of having a meeting. There's no sense having a meeting and the public asking us questions, well, why isn't the pool going to be open? Where is the money going to come from? We have to have our financial house in order before we can we can extend ourselves to the public. Uh, so now at this time, I don't see anything else. So great, thank you. New business. Well, we've gone through that. Anything further? No motion. Sorry. Move to close. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Carried.